Alright guys, so Physical Korra is just around the corner and I'm super hyped. If you've been following me on my channel, you know that I have really, really, really wanted to get this damn character. I want this card in my freaking deck, period. That's all there is to it. I tried really hard uh, to get the Physical Omega Shenron just because he would be a great addition. There's no official information or confirmation as of right now. It is 11.30pm Eastern Time. Um, the actual event should be coming out at 11.30 p.m. Pacific time, if I'm not mistaken. So I think that's like 2.30 in the morning Eastern time. I may or may not be up for it. I don't know yet. Um, but I was unable to get it. Uh, even off camera, I ended up doing an additional like 300 to 400 stones worth of summons onto the banner. I couldn't, still couldn't get the physical Omega Shenron. But the banner itself, nonetheless, for the physical Korra is here. Hopefully, the Omega Shenron will be on it. I did get some other good cards from the Omega Shenron banner regardless. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about it. I'm not going to be doing an event review here. We're just going to talk about the card, his Doken Awakening, and a couple of teams that you can run on here. So first off, Terrifying Pressure, Korra, Final Form. He is the Extreme Physical Type Leader. Uh, we're not going to go too deep into his Undoken Form. He does immense damage, greatly lowers defense, and his passive skill, Sheer Terror, Attack and Defense, plus 80%, and he launches an additional Super Attack with a rare chance to be a Super. Uh, not horrible, not great. Link skills, strongest clan in space, thirst for conquest, shocking speed, big bad bosses, metamorphosis, and universe's most malevolent. He has max stats of HP of 8635, defense or attack of 9162, and defense of 3855, and he has a 12 key multiplier of 140%. He has a semi farmable super attack, and by semi farmable I mean he techni it's technically farmable from the physical and oh not the, the intelligence Korra from the actual um, event that you grind out Korra's, but he has like a 1% drop rate, so it's like, like this this Korra actually right here, the Cold Hearted Invasion Korra from the strongest event, you're not going to be able to grind those Korra's, he's really just more so a summonable unit, but he's very common, so save them up, you can get 9 of them if you haven't done so already, if you have him, you don't want to waste all their Kai's in case you were one of the few who weren't able to take advantage of the 2 year celebration or the World Tournament, he Doken Awakens with 15,000, I think this is Dory, uh, Nays, Korra medals and Goku, 20 Goku medals. So it is a grind, guys. It is a grind, but it's worth it. He Doken Awakens into the final form Korra, as you saw before. Then Z Awakened him for a 100% chance to increase his super attack. Um, get him up to super attack 10 before you Doken him. When he Doken Awakens, he Doken Awakens with what is it, 77 normal medals. These medals are also used on the Technique Korra, the Agility SSR Korra in the future, and the Agility Thouser. This is the Korra from Baba Shop, by the way. Um, he Doken Awakens into open the gates of hell Korra final form um so his leader ability obviously like i stated before he is the extreme physical type leader key plus three hp attack and defense plus 120 percent you can run a super if you like to not really optimal but you can if you're lacking good characters or if your only good characters are super and extreme uh key plus one hp attack and defense plus 50 percent for super a super attack death crasher causes immense damage to the enemy and greatly lowers defense passive skill abject hell uh, attack and defense plus 100%, so that's freaking sick. Launch an additional attack, which has a chance to become a super attack. So, I, I don't know the exact uh, percentage on this, I forgot, I think it was 50%. Um, but attack and defense, just off the bat because of his passive skill, he's going to be tanking hits and he's going to be hitting like a truck. Um, and he has that chance to launch an additional super attack. Or he, he launches the, the additional super uh, yeah, He launches the additional attack. But it has a chance to become a super attack. His new link skills are Strongest Clan in Space, Thirst for Conquest, Big Bad Bosses, Shocking Speed, Universe's Most Malevolent, Metamorphosis, and Fierce Battle. His new stats are HP of 11,125, Attack of 10,950, and Defense of 4,875. He still has a 12 key multiplier of 140%. Now, I really want him, and why do I want him? Well, first off, guys, every single super character essentially is a freaking super saiyan and honestly i'm tired of running super saiyans i, I really am that's all there is to it I, I like the super saiyans yes they are cool they are awesome good cards that a lot of them hit very hard so this is what i believe is going to be like an ideal team i created it over here and i'll go ahead and show you um so this i know they know it's a little bit convoluted there's a whole bunch of different play things all over the place so i'm going to try and do my best to show you i'm not going to go too deep into the link skills but we have obviously the Korra and his best linking buddy full power frieza now, I have mine 100% it. That's why I'm super hyped about it. They share a whole bunch of links. Let me translate this to English first off so that way we can actually see. Um, so, Big Bad Boss is the universe's most malevolent, strongest clan in the universe, and super fierce battle. So, they're hitting each other up with 30% uh, attack buff on Norm, plus an extra 20 25%, which is what? 
30, 40, 55 percent attack when HP is 80 percent or below, and two key. So they're a really, really good friend. On top of that, he does the Korra does link pretty freaking well with the Omega Shenron. Them sharing three consecutive links together, and I believe it's Big Bad Boss's shocking speed and super fierce battle. So overall, that's still not bad. I think that's only a 10% down from what him and Frieza share. So, yeah, uh, no, 15% down from what him and Frieza share. So not horrible, really not horrible at all. And then if you do have the Omega and you have the Sin Shenron, those two share six link skills as well. Pretty sure it's like every single one. Cruelty, Big uh, big Bad Bosses, GT, Super Fierce Battle, Fear and Faith, and uh, Shadow Dragon. So they're hitting each other up with, what, 10%, 30%, 25 so that's what, uh... 30, 40, 50, 60, 5%. 65% attack buff just from them two being linked together, plus four key, they're always getting super attack swap. Um, that's just the Omega, that's the physical Omega and the Sin Shenron linked together. Now you also have them. At this point in the game, we don't have the Super Saiyan, the Super Saiyan 3 Broly Dokened, but he will be coming at some point. When he comes, he shares five link skills with the with the uh, well with the 70% lead Broly. That's uh, uh, attack plus 700 for the Saiyan Warrior race. Super Saiyan attack plus 10%, Saiyan Blood, which is uh, key plus one. Uh, I think it's like uh, whatever it is against the king, uh, key plus one, and Super Fierce Battle. Um, as of right now, they share four key, though, if you use the just the SSR variant of that Broly. And they give each other a 10% attack buff, a 700 flat out boost, and two key. So those two do link well together, not amazing. And in the future, if we get LR Ginyu, you have the Ginyu Force, and then Captain Ginyu themselves, and then he links well with, well, himself, essentially. Uh, respect, Ginyu, uh, Ginyu, the Ginyu Force uh, link skill, loyalty, pose, and fear and faith. So that's what two, four, five key that they share, and then 25% attack buff. Not horrible, really good. Um, you also have the ability you can run these three guys as support, not all of them at the same time, obviously. But the physical super boot, which I actually you guys didn't see, I was able to pull him off camera. I did two additional multi summons. Actually, I think I did four additional multi summons. I did a couple other multi-summons off-camera, and I ended up pulling the Super Boo. He is extreme physical type, uh, attack and defense plus 40%, and he gives everyone key plus 3, so he's really solid support. Now, between these two, the Kid Boo and the Goku Black, Goku Black doesn't give an attack or a defense buff, but he gives a guaranteed 3 key. The Kid Boo doesn't give any key whatsoever, which really isn't needed on this team, as I showed you with all these different linking buddies. But his passive skill, while it's good for the buff, it's attack and defense plus 50% for all allies, so he's very good. It's only when HP is 80% or above. That is very hard to maintain, but when it is maintained... He is a very, very good uh, unit in order to make sure that you guys are hitting very hard. I see, this is this is really why I like this freaking, I want this physical Korra. You have Korra, you have Frieza, you have Omega and Sin, you have Broly and his other form, and you have Captain Ginyu and, well, Captain the Ginyu Force. So, like, that's just freaking awesome. And then you have the two boos. I mean, you guys are essentially, we're, we have almost every single arc or every single type of character in here. I mean, yeah, we don't have Cell, but you do have uh, Android 17, which him, and then you have Super 17. They're not the ideal linking buddies, but the 17, Super 17 does link well with the Omega Shenron if you don't have Sin. Um, it's short four link skills. He also links well with Goku Black. You do have the other um, Android 17, which you link well with. Um, so, I mean, it's just awesome. I and mean, you could look over here. I mean, look at what who you have as SSR and higher. I mean, hell, you even have Nappa up in here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of different variations. It's not just Super Saiyans across the board. It's all of the villains. That's really why I like this. Now, I also did this. This is um, a damage reduction team that you can create. Um, this, the thing is, like, see, uh, this Vegeta is really good with damage reduction. This is the physical Vegeta. When he attacks the opponent, their attack is reduced by 40%. I believe it's only for the turn that he attacks them. But that's still a 40% reduction in attack, right? Then Goku Black, when he launches a super attack, he reduces attack. Korra is there because you need Korra. You're going to have another one of his friends on rotation, assuming you do this. King Cold reduces attack by 25% when he when just by his passive alone. And then him and Mecha Frieza, and these two are free to play, both lower attack. Now, I'm not saying this is ideal, but you can do this for a lower attack team. And then Super Boo, he recovers health. I think it's 1,000 per key orb obtained, and he lowers attack as well. Um, and you're going to have the other physical cores. You could rely on those two physical cores, though every third round there won't be a physical core. But those two could be your damage dealers, and everyone else can be doing the damage reduction. And you have this boo to heal you. So you're going to be doing very well. It's a very good, a very optimal, not optimal, but a very good way to run an event if you don't have great cards. Because you're doing damage reduction, and you're healing yourself, and you're relying on the two physical cores in order to move forward. And one other team I didn't want to say is... 
hell guys you have a freaking boo team here um freaking pretty sick now there's two ways you can go about this now you have the sr boo these two link very well together um it's not really great for damage but this boo always on round will always heal you when your hp drops below 25 percent or below 30 percent i believe let's see i have him up over here actually uh, recover 25% when HP is 40% or below. Now, 40% on a double 120 lead, holy crap, you're always going to be healing. And 25% is no freaking joke. Like, a quarter of 200,000 is 50,000, and you're probably going to be running about 250,000. So, well, it's about 50, 60,000 maybe, about 60 to 65,000 HP regeneration. On top of that, you also have to remember they share infinite regeneration, which I believe is 3% key or 5%, 3 or 5%, yeah, 3% um, key uh, HP recovery on top of that. So that's definitely a good thing. Um, they These two don't hit that hard, but they're good to have on there just for that regeneration. Or, you know, another good way to do it, instead of keeping these guys off. Now, I would really like to keep these guys on rotation, because if you have these or, yeah, on the rotating block, because they will give buffs to the, physical, the full power Frieza and the Korra. But you could also keep them linked together for the same type of buff. They link with four link skills instead of three. They give each other, what is that, um, uh, an attack buff of 20% total. Um, standing tall, wall standing tall, 15%, so that's 25, 35%, and then HP, and, um, uh, HP regeneration, right? On top of their passives, their passives mixed together, assuming your HP is 80% or above, which is a little bit easier to do with Majin Buu's on your team, uh, and these two guys hitting hard and defending because they're both good tanks when you throw some dupe system in there, they're giving each other attack plus 90% at the start of the turn. So these two cards that really don't do as much damage in the beginning, when they're linked together with all that, so that's 90% on top of their link skills. So that's 90, 125% attack buff just having these two guys linked together, guys. That's freaking insane. And you can keep these two on rotation, or you can throw Goku Black on rotation, or someone else, whoever, any hard hitters that you have. It's just one way you guys can go. Now, I'm just saying this because this is just who I really like to run. There's really not a bad way to go about building a, phys a, a mono, uh, physical, extreme villains team there are a lot of different options for you to go now if you guys don't already know this go into dokonbattlebuilder.com throw your good units in there i'm not so i'm not going to tell you to go for this or not i personally have been waiting for this for a long time um all the cards like that's why i went so hard on the omega shenron banner because i wanted the physical and that's why i only did the, the discounted summons on the super saiyan 4 gogeta banner on the global side for in terms of this i want the physical extreme team Honestly, from here on out, I'm probably only going to go on the Super Saiyan, uh, the Super Saiyan Gogeta banner, just because I would like the Intelligent Super Saiyan Gogeta and the Technique Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku. Um, but outside of that, for my physical team, I don't really want the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. This is where I'm coming for. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to go over that with you. These are all the teams that you can build. They There are a lot of different things that you can do with all these teams. They are good teams that you can build, and you can actually take on a lot of events with this, and you could really rely on the Korra. And honestly, if you've been playing this for the past couple of months with the two-year celebration, getting two freaking cards that you can choose, on top of the fact that the full power Frieza should be on the banner, you should have at least one full power Frieza, which will make this even better. Immense damage modifier with 120% passive skill on top of the links. That's what 120%, assuming you're 80% or below, that's 120, 145 plus... 45, 50, um, yeah, 55, 65, 75, 175 percent attack increase on the full power Frieza. But anyway, guys, I've been rambling a little bit too much. Thank you for joining me here today. I plan on going for this banner, so stay tuned. I'll be doing a lot of summoning videos on this banner until I get him. I had a dream last night that I pulled him and Omega in one multi summon within the first three that I did. So who knows? Let's keep my fingers crossed, and I really hope that I pull him. Good luck if you plan on pulling him. I'll catch you guys later.